In the police body cam footage, a group of people appeared to be walking briskly from where four University of Idaho students were murdered. If you fast forward 19 minutes and 28 seconds in, in the top right corner, the group of people appear. At 3.15 a.m., an alcohol-related incident was being recorded in front of Sigma Chi. This is the frat house where Ethan and Zaina had partied that night. The body cam footage was filmed at this red fire hydrant, and the group of people running appeared here. And from this angle, is right here. In fact, there's a walkway from the road that leads to the house. Kaylee's phone records show a last phone call made at 2.52 a.m. It is believed the murders happened between 3 and 4 a.m. The group of people running were seen at 3.12 a.m. This small detail could be something or nothing. This is a college neighborhood, and maybe this was a group of people going to the frat house, or maybe they had just left from this apartment complex, or maybe they left from the walkway that leads to the house. Who knows? What do you think? There's a theory going around, and it's growing more and more steam, so I think we have to discuss it. The theory is the murder of Madison, Zanna, Kaylee, and Ethan could have been the work of a Northwest serial killer. We now have three unsolved, gruesome, and seemingly random stabbing attacks in the Northwest over the past three years. And you won't believe the similarities between the three cases. Let's start with Sandra Ladd. Sandra went to bed on June 13th, 2020, and was not heard from again until she was found deceased the following day on the 14th. She was found in her bed with multiple stab wounds and no clues left behind. All the police know is most likely during the late hours of the 13th, someone got into her home and murdered her in her sleep. This case has obviously never been solved. Now let's fast forward to August the 13th of 2021 where Travis and Jamie Lynn were sound asleep in their home when around 3 a.m. an intruder got into their home and into their bedroom and began stabbing them while they slept. This was obviously another very bloody and gruesome attack, and it would take Travis's life. However, miraculously, his wife survived despite being stabbed 19 times. This attack took place in Oregon, about an hour and a half from where Sandra was murdered the year prior. So now we have two very gruesome stabbing attacks, both occurring on the 13th day of a month, about a year apart from each other, and both occurring in the middle of the night. So that leads us to the year 2022, to the next bordering state, which is Idaho. And this is a map showing the route between each crime scene. So we started in Washington, have dropped down to Oregon, and now have obviously moved over to Idaho. And again, almost a year from the previous attack, on the 13th, in the middle of the night, a very gruesome murder would take place again. So we now have a seemingly random, sadistic stabbing attack on June 13th of 2020, August 13th of 2021, and now November 13th of 2022. And here we are again, a month out from this attack, and again with no suspect. This girl was unalived by her boyfriend as he recorded it on his cell phone. On May 27, 2016, 15-year-old Karen Perez disappeared from her school. When Karen did not come home from school that day, her parents immediately reported her missing to Houston police and a search party was formed in hopes to find Karen. At the forefront of the search for Karen was her 15-year-old boyfriend, Jesus Campos Jr. After three days of unsuccessful searches, Jesus was driving around with his father when he calmly said, quote, just take me home because she is not alive, unquote. His father immediately drove him to Houston police and asked him to admit this to them. Of course, Jesus denied any knowledge of his girlfriend's disappearance. The only information he said that he did have was that he saw her a day before she disappeared at a taqueria. Soon after, a teenager contacted Texas Equisearch to actually admit that he had been at the taqueria with both Jesus and Karen and two other teenagers on the day Karen disappeared. He also said that after leaving the taqueria, all of them went to an abandoned apartment complex across the street from South Houston High School. He said that him and the two other teenagers went back to school while Karen and Jesus stayed behind. After receiving this tip, police immediately went to this abandoned apartment complex where they unfortunately found the lifeless body of Karen. I'm putting a trigger warning here because this has to do with themes of SA um, and then also just graphic depictions of unaliving. So if that's not for you, that's totally okay. I understand. Um, but I am going to get into that part of the story now. 
So after police found the body of Karen, it was determined that she had been strangled to death and then stuffed in a cabinet underneath the sink. After this discovery, police immediately zoned in on Jesus. They obtained a search warrant for his cell phone, and what they found was extremely disturbing to even the most seasoned homicide detectives. On Jesus's phone, they found pictures of Karen as well as a video of her being essayed and unalived by Jesus. In the video, Karen can be heard crying, asking Jesus not to essay her and that she did not want to die. Investigators also discovered conversations between Jesus and Karen. Jesus had ordered Karen to skip school with him, but once she told him that she could not skip school, he said that he would kill her if she didn't. Investigators also found that he had taken photos of her after she had already died. And it was also discovered that Jose sent these photos to at least two friends who failed to tell police. And in one reply from one of those friends, it said, quote, bros before hoes, unquote. Go to part two. This is part two of Karen Perez. I am putting another trigger warning here. This does have to do with themes of SA and graphic depictions of death. If that is not for you, I totally understand, but I am going to get into it. In part one, we learned that Karen Perez was strangled by her boyfriend, Jesus Campos Jr., then stuffed under a kitchen cabinet. Jesus also recorded the whole entire thing on his cell phone and sent pictures of her to his friends. So after police are finding all of this out, CCTV footage would show Jesus and Karen leaving the taqueria the day she disappeared hand in hand. And an employee would identify Jesus and say that shortly after the two left, he had actually come back alone and asked to borrow the phone so he could call his mom and ask her to come pick him up. Jesus had absolutely no motive and he wasn't willing to give over any information. During the trial, jurors and people of the court were shown very graphic images as well as the videos. Karen's mother spoke out about the photos that were shown and said that the one that haunted her the most was of Jesus stepping on Karen's face after she had been unalived. On November 6, 2018, Jesus was found guilty of the unaliving of Karen Perez, and he was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 40 years. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, as always, if you guys have any case suggestions, I actually have a suggestion form that you can fill out. It is linked on my page. I do not read through my comments, so um, I will have a hard time finding a case that you suggest. So please go to that case suggestion form for me so that I can actually see the cases that you want to hear. Better. Yeah, I went through some rough patches, but now I'm glad I'm better. Could have went mad like Arthur Fleck. Back then I had the baddest temper. Yeah. Young boy with the face red and my grace red, just straight F's. Safe to say my bright future was named dead. Oh, no. Man, but the devil wanna whisper to me, ah, I just say say less. Yeah. Worked hard, I got a little bit of clout. Safe to say now they impressed. Free roam through this whole game without a GPS or a map. They say what I do's easy, but don't do it. There's no ignoring that. What I put together, I thread the needle, it's so intact. People in my hometown wonder, hey, but Joey, yeah, where'd you go? This house holds one of the strangest true crime cases you'll ever hear. Over 60 years ago, a man named Dr. Harold Perelson lived here with his wife and children. One early morning in December 1959, the doctor snapped. He killed his wife in her sleep using a hammer, then went to his daughter's bedroom. He tried to kill his oldest daughter the same way, but missed. She fled the house. He overdosed taking his own life and leaving his three children with no parents. To this day, nobody knows what drove a seemingly successful doctor to do this.